we've come here this morning to thank him for Jesus and the gospel. We thank him for the Holy Spirit and the church of Christ. We thank him for blessing us to be able to come to this place and to lift up the match lips and the mighty name of Jesus. If you are visiting with us this morning, you are our honored guest. We want you to know that we appreciate your presence here in this assembly. Number 255 has been selected for the song of invitation. 255. I hope that all of us are well, not just physically, but spiritually. I hope that as we take this journey as pilgrims and strangers in this land, that all of us will end up with God in eternal bliss, salvation forever. As we share the good news of Jesus with the world, we're praying that many, if not all, will take heed to the message. The gospel of Christ is the only power God uses to save the souls of men. We cannot at any time afford to water it down. We cannot add to it or take away from it. It was designed by God to save the souls of men. I want to read again Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse number 5 as we lay the foundation for our message. The book of Luke, the chapter is 3. This is a very lengthy context. So I'm trying to get within the middle of it in order to share this message. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. Began not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. The people asked him saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, He that has two coats, let him impart to him that had none. He that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also the publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? He said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. As I think about John the Baptist out in the wilderness of Judea, preaching the baptism of repentance, telling the people that Jesus is coming. I look at the water in Jordan. 
And I think about the subject, water baptism only is not a fire escape. That's what I want to talk about. Water baptism only is not a fire escape. I want it to register. First of all, let me set the stage for this message. John the baptizer or the baptist, as he is known, was a wilderness preacher. John didn't start out preaching in the city. He preached in the less traveled places of southern Judea and in the Jordan River or Valley. Somehow the news of this wilderness preacher had reached the city of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas and people went out to see and to hear John preach. John's message was so profound, so unique, so different. And yet so straight until the Pharisees came inquiring. There are several parallel texts, if you please, regarding this great preaching of John the baptizer. Come over to John chapter 1 for a moment. We're going to look at verses 19 through 23. I just want to show you that John's a preaching was an outstanding uh, preaching because John preached for the Lord. Are you in the book of John chapter 1? Beginning with verse number 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed. And denied not but confess I am not the Christ. They asked him. What then? Are thou Elias? He said unto them I am not. Are thou that prophet? He answered no. Then said they unto him. Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said I am the voice. Of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. I want to go back to Luke chapter 3. Because that's our pivotal passage. I want it understood that John the Baptist was out in the wilderness of Judea. Preaching the baptism of repentance. Are you in Luke chapter 3 again? Listen to verse number 3. And he came into all, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John was that voice preaching in the wilderness. John was preparing the hearts of the people for the coming of the Christ. As a matter of fact, even preachers today, we are preparing the hearts of the people for the second coming of the Christ. John the Baptist prepared the hearts of the people for the first coming coming of the Christ. We as preachers today, we are preparing the hearts of the people for the second coming of Christ. Make no mistake about it, just like he came the first time, he's coming the second time. John the Baptist did not know that he was Elias or Elijah that was to come. Come over to the book of Malachi chapter 4. Verses 4, or verses 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 4. 
I want to begin reading at verse number 5. I want you to hear the prophecy that went out. Because when I talk about the Elijah to come, I'm talking about John the Baptist. Even though John did not know exactly who he was, but yet he knew what he came to do. Are you in the book of Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5? Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. What is he going to do when he gets here? He's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father. When Elijah comes, he's going to make way, make straight the path of the Lord. Come over to Matthew chapter 17. Beginning with verse number 10. Matthew chapter 17. Beginning with verse number 10. You remember they asked John in John chapter 1, Are thou Elijah? John said, I'm not. Who are you then? Are you the Christ? John said, I'm not. Are you that prophet then? John said, no, I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Are you in Matthew chapter 17 and verse number 10? And his disciples asked him saying, why then say the scribe that Elijah must first come? Jesus answered and said unto them, truly Elijah shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise also shall the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. You don't have to say amen, just pay attention. In other words, John the Baptist was Elijah who was to come. In other words, John came in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. John was not Elijah reincarnated. John was not Elijah physically in the flesh. John came in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. Come over to Luke chapter 1 and verse 17. I, I'm just having Bible study here in this message. In Luke chapter 1 and verse number 17. I just want to know if you're there. Listen to what your Bible says. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient uh, to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This is John the Baptist, you all. You need to understand that John the Baptist came in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. What did he come to do? He came to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children and to make straight and prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. Something very unique was happening here with John's baptism. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. And I know I need to show the water. And I'm going to show the water. But most importantly, I'm also going to show repentance. Well, I know we love to talk about water baptism. People ought to be washed in the water. But let me tell you something. There is a thing called repentance that ought to proceed being baptized in the water. See, a lot of people get baptized in the water, but they don't repent before they go down in the water. They don't make a change before they go into the water. That's why I say water baptism only is not a fire escape. See, when I talk about a fire escape, I'm talking about people trying to escape the fires of hell. I'm talking about those who don't want to go to hell and spend eternity in a lake of fire. But water baptism only is not a fire escape. A lot of people run to the water only thinking they're going to escape the fires of hell. But I got some news for you. You can sit up in here all you want to. Talking about you've been in the water. I want to know what did you do before you got there. Somebody ought to say amen when you can. 
Go back to Luke chapter 3 and verse number 3. Let me work on it. I know where I am. I'm almost four years in this place. Three and a half. That's good news. So I know where I am. I know who, who, who I'm among. I know all about it now. So I can say what I want to say. You don't have to say, man, I'm going to say it anyway. In Luke chapter 3 and verse 3, are you there? And he came into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Notice what he was preaching. He was preaching the baptism of repentance. You know what that says to me? That says to me, before you get baptized, you need to repent. Oh, I'm going to talk about the divers' washings and the many ceremonial washings and the purpose for them. But, but I want you to understand before I get there that something needs to happen before you get washed. You have to make up in your mind that you believe that Jesus is the Christ. You have to make up in your mind that you want to live a Christian life. You have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ. The son of the living God. And then go down in the water. But if these things don't proceed. Going into the water. I'm telling you the water is not enough. If you all don't mind. I need to help us to understand a few things. In the Old Testament. The Jews had the rituals. And ceremonial washing. For the purpose of cleansing. Go over to Hebrews chapter 10. I, I want to make this plain. See, we wash a lot of stuff. But let me tell you something. If you don't put any detergent in the water, what you're washing may not get clean. We have to put something in the water. Isn't that right? You see, when you go down in that water, the blood of Jesus, yes, will wash your sins away. But only if you do like we talk about that thing called change or repentance. There's no change. There's no repentance. There is no cleansing. When we go into the water. Are you in Hebrews chapter 9? Verse number 9, Hebrews. Where, I, where you say I say it? Well, I'm going to chapter 9 since I got it before me. I told you 10, I meant 9. Hebrews 9, 9 and 10. Are you all still alright? See how quick you all jump on me? What you mean? <laughs> Are you in Hebrews chapter 9? That's fine with me. Because when you finish chastising me, I'm going to tell 